Terry, and you've become the guy, the, the go-to guy to talk about Alabama football. Like, how much trust is required to be that guy? Because I know if you say sort of the wrong thing that you don't do any more interviews. No, so, you don't do no more. You, I would but, say, but you've gotten away with a lot. I have. I would say, like, just from talking to Josh, talking to Alex, I kind of go up there and I kind of take over saving approach, like, from doing interviews now to having to do other interviews, like you got to think about it as an interviewer and as a person who's recording it or fans who's watching it, they don't want to hear you get up there and just say the typical thing. Like, man, you know, we had a good game. Uh, I was able to go out there and execute. We were able to make plays. We work on this. No, they want you to talk about the game, talk about in detail, walk them through, make them feel like they were there. And I uh, just a person kind of growing up, my, my granddad, he was kind of like a, I said he was kind of like he did, but now my granddad kind of like a storyteller. Yeah, and I've always been one of those guys. Like you, you know, when you go to family reunions or you around your friends and stuff, when you hear stories about people, it make you excited. And like my teammates always say, "Man, yeah, Tyrion, you're gonna be the guy when, when they make a documentary or they or they make something on this team. Yeah, you're definitely gonna be the guy who they following around." So, oh, exactly. So, was, you, was your grandfather the guy at any family gathering? Like everybody would just be gathered around him, oh, listening. Man. man, like my granddad. It will be him. He obviously he'll bless the food. And then when it just came to like stories, it, it would actually be his brother, my uncle Andre. My uncle Andre, like you know how it is at family functions, man. People they drinking and stuff. When they hey, when he kind of get that drink in them, he and you not, man. Ne- next thing you know, he get the man, your granddad was this. I remember this, I remember this. And it just be like, I, I was the type of person, I'd be like, Yeah, tell me more. Like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm intrigued to hear it. Like, I'm one of those people. So like when people my granddad always told me just uh, kind of like how I say in the Bible, be quick to listen and slow to speak. So, I mean, the reason why I'm able to tell or uh, I think it's sell during the media is because I listen a lot and really observe a lot. Well, and and you do take us behind the curtain a little bit, but you don't give away anything that's a state yeah. secret. Like like when you – okay, so you go, you went viral last week for talking about getting yelled at by Coach Saban. Yes, sir. But you didn't say – you nah, very careful not to say what he said. I, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. But that is an experience because, like, we all see it on TV, and we just wonder, like, what is that like when you are that guy? Like, when, when in that moment, did you have any? Like, do you even think that? Oh my God, millions of people are watching me get chewed out by this man, or or is it? I just need to time up the blitz on the motion better. No clue. I was literally just, I need to time up the blitz on the motion better because I'm thinking about it in my head. Obviously, it's a game going on while it's a game being played. If I time up that blitz on the motion, I get the sack. We get off the field on third down. They don't keep driving. They don't get a field goal. So just thinking about things like that, playing the game inside your head. And I honestly, like, it, it comes in practice. Like, most people don't understand, like, Coach Saban, like, he is a character. Like, the guy is funny. Like, he's a funny guy. So, like, I mean, people would look at it like, oh, he was getting chewed out. He was getting yelled at. Nine out of ten in practice, he'd chew you out. He'd yell at you. Then he'd make a joke out of it. So, I mean, like I said, you should be worried when he's not saying something to you. We'll be right back with more from Terry on Arnold. But first, a word from Bird Dogs. That's right. Bird Dogs is the place for shorts, pants, joggers that help you live a life of maximum efficiency. That's right. Fart Garfunkels, Dorito Corleones. That's right. The underwear is built right in, and it feels like it was made just for you. It also feels like you're going commando in any situation. I've got the Steven Jobs. Those are pants that look better than any pair of chinos that I own. And oh yeah, that liner's built right in. So I'm in a professional work setting. And nobody even realizes I'm going commando. That's an advantage for me. It's not just the pants, though. Bird Dogs now taking care of your torso as well. Got the Fidel Bass Pro Polo on right now. They make you look good. They make you feel good. And they make you live a life of maximum efficiency. Birddogs.com slash staples. That promo code gets you a free Hydro Flask style bottle with your first order. Birddogs.com slash staples. Load up shorts for the bar, for the restaurant, pants for work, workout shorts, polos. They got it all. Birddogs.com, promo code staples. 
Well, your your corner, so you get the full Nick Saban experience. Because I've always said, you know, people people say, you know, the the DB's coach at Alabama is really Nick Saban. But I always feel like watching you guys practice, he's more like the GA who works with the DBs. He like works. he's throwing you interceptions and well, he don't throw no more because I mean he had shoulder surgery, so that's true. He don't really throw, but uh, as far as watching it, like I mean, yesterday going out our breaks, come on three, get out the break, get out the break three. <laughs> All right, it'll be like, uh, like people would say, um, punt like during punt when we do that period. Kool Aid is the punt returner, so they'll be down there. I don't know what they be talking about, but he just be down to, I mean, laughing it up, laughing <laughs> it up, and then Kool Aid will be like. Oh man, coach, they're, they're your son, man. What you gonna do with your son? Or I tell Kool Aid, like, man, uh, go go to your dad, man. You know, you know, Coach Saban, your dad. And like, when we make those kind of jokes with him, because obviously, like they said, before we came, it was Pat Sertan. Before mm-hmm. him, it was Minka. And just having that type of relationship with him, I, I feel like he he kind of does look at himself like that. I won't say like a father, but like a godfather kind of. Minka's teammates would say that that they their personalities were exactly alike. Like both of them are kind of obsessive. Like. Uh, I, I wish I could remember. It was one of the D linemen was explaining that like we had a we were doing interviews and people had their cell phones on the table to to record, and he's like he took it and made it like slightly off center, and he's like yeah. if you had this in front of Minka or Coach Saban, they would fix it for you, yeah. like they would make it look perfect. Like, are, are you and Kool Aid like him, or is it See, not look, necessarily? I'm glad you asked that question. I can explain it to you. The one who was like Coach Saban the most. As far as being a perfectionist, as far as not laughing, very, very serious, Caleb Downs. Okay. Now, the people who get Coach Saban going bring out the personality in them, me and Kool-Aid. Like before a game, when it comes time before a game, because Caleb is my roommate. So that's my Lank brother right there. There you go. <laughs> oh, we, we're going to talk about Lank, too. We have a lot. I have Lank questions. So, yeah. But, but, so, so that right there, uh, and Jay Mill too. Speaking about Jay Mill, like Jay Mill, he bring it out of Coach Saban too. And uh, obviously, we started the length thing in practice. Like I, I told him yesterday in practice, I'm, I'm here to lank you, boy. And then, <laughs> you know, he he completed it. He go he completed the pass into my soul. like that. So, but back to what I was saying, like Coach Saban, the uh, one who is most like him and similar to him would definitely be Caleb Downs. Kool Aid and I, we bring the personality out of him. Malachi, he's kind of like. Malachi is the leader of the group. Like Malachi don't get too high. He don't get too low. He just chill. Like almost like the person who the chaperone. Like he'd just be like, what are these guys doing? Like he just chill. So you, you know you have to worry if Malachi gets upset or. Exactly. And, and Malachi, like it would say practice Malachi versus game day Malachi, whole different person. I kid you not. Before the game, we coming out there. As we're walking out, uh, Anias was actually stretching. He's stretching. Malachi walked by him. Mm. We're gonna see what you want. We're gonna see what Coach Saban want. We're gonna find out what Coach Saban want tonight. First play of the game, man. Malachi blocking. We gonna see what he want. I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, just give me the call, man. You, you, you can do all that. Give me the call. So I mean, when I say like a guy who literally gets people going, like Malachi has grown as far as leadership and maturity. And I wish people really knew how great of a job he's done. Like you can honestly say when you come here and you show up as far as being a leader, like you can't have any bad days. People going to point the finger at you. Cause I know like sometimes he'll tell me like, man, T hurry up, man, jog to the ball. Next play, he don't jog to the ball. I'm, hey Kyle, you just told me you jog to the ball. You talking about me. So, I mean, just as far as that and that approach, I mean, he's done a great job of leading, man. Like the so, guy is a true professional. So we do need to talk about the Lank brothers because Jalen Milrow mm-hmm. and you, Lank brothers. Let them they say that- or no. Let the naysayers know. So then when did y'all come up with that? Came up with it last year during the locker room. We were just sitting around. We were talking. We was like, man, we need something that, that's going to get us going. Kind of like that. That is just keep us going. Obviously, Bryce was the quarterback then. And Bryce, very, very humble, nonchalant. And just as far as never too high, never too low. Jay Mill, total opposite. Jay Mill in the locker room, center of attention. In their uh, player meetings, he gonna get up, he gonna talk, say what's on his mind. So just as far as that being like, when we when we came up with Lank, it was like, man, we gotta really go out here and let these naysayers know because they doubting us. And then it really came into play, obviously, when we didn't make the national championship last year, and just hearing all the outside noise going into this year, like we really started to put it together, like and started well, to really embrace it. And and it, it it's real, it's it's genuine because like. Some of your predecessors at Alabama in, you know, like 2016, 17, that era, 
they'd be like, nobody respects us. And, and I'd be sitting there doing the interview, like literally everyone respects you. Man, we picked respect. you number one, but, but this year it wasn't like that. You, no, you were wasn't. not, not picked to win the sec and not, so you're dealing with all that stuff. It's real. Now, Man. did you, did you ever hit coach Saban with a link? Has, has, have you hit him with that at practice? Have you explained See, it to him? No, I haven't got a chance to explain it to him yet, but as far as like, we'll be doing, we could be doing like a drill. I could get an interception or some Lank coach Lank, and he'd just look at me like, "Huh?" <laughs> but I, mean, I have I haven't got a chance to actually explain it to him. Obviously, I'm waiting. That day gonna come, and when I explain it to him, he'll probably be like, mm, "Okay, three. Well, he's okay. got a four letter word that that he likes a lot, and that's D's. Has he hit oh. you with one of those? Oh man, <laughs> hey, and he, he hit me one of those yesterday. So, so it's uh, Taryn, you like Wendy's? Yeah. How about D's? Yeah, yeah exactly. So it, it is. A, so Marlon Humphrey is apparently to blame for for that. For that, right he here? introduced it, and and all of and and Coach Saban's like, oh, I didn't do this in elementary school, but yeah, but I will hungry. embrace it now. So <laughs> so yeah, you you have to hit him with lank, and then you you can have a lank off and a D's off, and be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> these are <laughs> exactly i mean you if he's gonna hit you guys with that so often you do need to have to you gotta have a combat well or you gotta be able to set him up when he least expects it for once because yes. yes. he'll appreciate it yeah a these nuts guy appreciates when someone gets him what it is yeah, you're right about that you're so right about that I probably should ask you at least one football question. I know uh, you, we were talking about Malachi before. He's he's you know we saw him get hurt in the in the A and M game. Not asking you to break any news, but you have to prepare at corner and star anyway every every week. What is that like juggling both of those? I would say um, T. Rob did a very great job preparing me during the off season. Obviously, creating like position versatility. It's not really something as far as it's a struggle because think about it when you play corner, a guy takes a reduced split. You're playing off, playing off man. Only thing at star is you have to over communicate. Obviously, you're an apex player, you're in the run game more. And um, I played safety in high school. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of like I was telling Malachi, I was like, y'all gonna see, y'all, y'all gonna see. Cause uh, like Brian Branch, as physical as he was, you know, BB had those hits where it was like, God, Lee. I told Malachi, I was like, you gonna see before this year over. I said, and, and when I do it, I'm gonna look at you. I said, I'm gonna look at you. Just as far as the preparation and going into that, it's I would say it's easy because who I'm going against in practice, going against guys like Isaiah Bond, Kobe Prentice, Jermaine Burton, Malik, Ja'Cory. So they, they do a very great job preparing us. And honestly, I would say uh, when we do like competition or stuff, like T-Rob says, it doesn't matter how tired you are. It's not like fall camp where you get to go against the offense all the time. These reps are very, very important. And we go out there, and like I said, during the game, how we trash talk, we go out there, hey, man, you know, put 20 on this rep right here. You catch this ball right here, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> and, and different things like that. Like, it just gets you going in practice. When when you're talking to those guys in the game, because I heard you talking about that in an interview earlier, and, and you said sometimes it's not really even trash talk that you're just nah, like perfect talking example. to I was, I was guarding Evan Stewart. I was guarding Evan Stewart, first play of the game. Uh, Jimbo Fisher's son plays high school football with my brother. He's the kicker. So yeah. we literally, I literally saw Jimbo uh, during the summertime when he came out there to visit his son, and we were just out there. We were talking and stuff. I said – um. You know, when we play y'all, man, it's going to be a good one. Atmosphere going to be crazy. And um, his son right there, he was like, yeah, you going to see. I'm going to be right there with my big fish chain on, and I'm going to be looking at you talking. I'm going to be talking. Literally, when I went out there, first play, I looked to the sidelines. Ethan right there, he was like, what's up? What's up? So then I looked, and uh, Evan, as Evan was jogging on the field, he smiled at me. So then as he smiled, I looked at Evan. I was like, it's going to be a long day today, E. It's going to be a long day today. Then he looked back at me. He was like, it's going to be a long day today for you. So <laughs> just, just those kind of things. And um, actually, I was, when I was playing guarding the Nias, I thought he was going to obviously like set the tone. I'm waiting for him to say something off the rip. Never said nothing. And we got into like a pushing and shoving match on the block. He's like, I'm coming. I'm coming. And then we lined up. This was like, a, I think, a second down when I lined up in the slot. I'm playing the six yards. I'm a man to man. As I'm a man to man, I'm looking. I'm like. I'm a man to man. It's you versus me. And then, like, you could tell he got when he got the false start penalty when he jumps. I said, You scared. You scared. Of <laughs> You're scared. Like, I was like, You scared. So, just like those little subliminal messages. And then, even on the chop ball, like, when he beat me on the chop, I thought I made the play. 
before I before I celebrated when he caught right there, I said, "Oh, you almost had it. Got to be quicker than that." <laughs> so like when that. you say when you say I'm in man, do you ever do that when you're actually when you guys are disguised as something, and you're gonna be you're gonna wind up in zone like just to mess oh, with their heads? Come on, man. Yeah. Like, you got game. like me, like Kool Aid is notorious for doing it. Like we align up, but it'd be a little tight, little split or something like that. Yeah, shoot, man. I got you right now. Is you versus me? Now we could be in cover two. <laughs> games like that, like you gotta play the subliminal mind game with the guy, because obviously, think about it. When you in man to man, and they know you in man to man, then it could be problems. Like you don't worry about what the receiver then You worry about what that offensive coordinator up there seeing, because they see every rep. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, speaking of that, speaking of offense, I gotta ask. I saw your interception against Ole Miss. I saw the spin move. Do you ever talk to Coach Saban? Do you ever show him what Travis Hunter does at Colorado and be like, listen? Man, I told him that it's, it's crazy. You said it. I literally told him, uh, Kendrick Law, when he got hurt, um, not got got hurt, but when he was out versus the USF game, I'm, I'm the backup on kickoff return. I told him, I said, Hey, I'm going to maximize my opportunity. If they kick this ball to me, I'm bringing the ball out. I had told everybody that. So when I lined up back there, everybody that stood up, they like, Oh, he's great to bring it out. Man, I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I seen them running down, I looked at Jacory. I was like, oh, man, I ain't bringing it out. So then I told him, I said, if they kick this ball to me, I said, no matter what, I said, I'm bringing this out for real. I'm bringing this out for real. And I said, I'm going to make the play. I'm, I'm going to make a big play in the game. T Rob looked at me right before he said, go crib it. I'm going right to. So then we break it down. We'll break it down on uh, like pack because we we're packed together in special teams. I said, we ain't breaking it down on that. We're breaking it down on score. I said, score on three. One, two, three, score. So when we run out there, we we actually call it return right. And I kind of feel like me playing offense, going to a smaller school in the high school, I just resolved it back to my way. We, we ran we ran return right. I seen the opening. I, I ran return left. <laughs> uh, <I> mean, <laughs> just things like that. Like I tell Coach Saban, I was like, man, Coach, I feel like I'm the most dynamic player on the team with the ball in my hands, if we're being honest. But you got to think about how he, how he sees it. He's a defensive specialist. And mm-hmm. as they would say, you got a lot of guys who are six foot one, six foot two, 190 pounds who can play receiver. You don't have many guys who can line up and stop those kind of guys. So well, and and there's a lot of NFL GMs that would, would say the same thing. We, yes, uh, we, we've all seen the salary scale. So you right Terry, about that. Terry, and I thank you so much. We got to have you back because I, I I want you telling stories all day. That yes, is, is the best. Terry, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.